Good day, everyone. Welcome to the fourth episode of our lecture series in Introduction to Philosophy of the Human Person. For today's episode, we will discuss the essence of knowledge and truth. It's a very interesting topic. Okay, let's discuss first nature of knowledge and truth. So what is knowledge and what is truth? Okay, according to Ayn Rand in 1990, knowledge is a mental grasp of reality, which either by perceptual observation or by a process of reason based on perceptual observation. They said that uh, knowledge is being perceived first through our uh, senses, through observation, and we call it as empirism. Before we can gain knowledge through the use of our rational faculty or by a process of reason, but it is based on the perceptual observation also. Okay, for example, sabi lang, paano mo daw malalaman na ang isang pagkain ay masarap? So, you must taste it. Kailangan nasahan mo. Okay, that is the use of our what? our sense of perception or our sense of taste. Now, how can you say that the uh, wood is hard if you will not feel it? So, through the use of the sense of touch or feeling. So, that is by perceptual observation or through the use of our senses. Now, if we are going to uh, give more or uh, dig more, analyze more about this particular object or thing, Alamin mo kung bakit, ano nga ba? Ano nga ba ang mayroon sa mesa? Bakit siya ay matigas? Ano ba ang mayroon sa pagkaan ito? Bakit siya ay masarap? Pag-iisipan mo, i-analyze mo, you are going to use the uh, rational faculty and that is by a process of reason. But it's based on perceptual observation. So, that is knowledge. They said also that when you know something, you understand its nature. Of course, like my example, so, paano mo nalaman na ang mesa ay matigas? Kasi, ito ay iyong nahawakan na ito ay matigas. So, you understand its nature. So, by nature, if it's made up of food, it is hard. You identify what it is and it stays with you. And that is knowledge. Knowledge is the clear awareness and understanding of something. So, if you do understand the meaning of this object, if you understand the nature of this object, you are aware of this. Therefore, that is knowledge. Okay, how about truth? Truth in the philosophy of language is the property of sentences, statements, assertions, beliefs, thoughts, or propositions that are sent to agree with the facts or to state what the case is. Truth always should be based on facts. It should have a factual basis. Nasasabi mo raw na ito ay katotohanan, truth. Kung ito ay may basihan, ito ay may mga supporting evidences that are based on facts. Okay, but however, we can say that the truth is a condition of knowledge. That is, if belief is not true, it cannot constitute knowledge. That's true because in acquiring knowledge, the ultimate goal is the truth. So, if you gain knowledge, if you do understand this object, the meaning of this object, and you found out that it is not true, therefore, we cannot consider it as knowledge because in acquiring knowledge, the ultimate goal is the truth. For example, uh, uh, inaalam mo, na ang ta ang alam mo ang taong nasa harapan na yon ay ang iyong kaibigan then alam mo na siya ay iyong kaibigan but are you sure that he really uh, he is really your friend okay so until you found out na uh, in the later uh, part of your uh, being together I he betrayed you. Look, so you found out na hindi pala siya totoong kaibigan. So therefore, 
that the uh, knowledge that you gained before is not true. Therefore, that is not true. So, parang ganito lang yun eh. Pag sinabi mong, for example, hindi mo pa alam na ang 3 plus 3 is equal to 6, ay eh, sinabi ng kaibigan mo, 3 plus 3 is equal to 9. So, ang alam mo, 9. Kasi sinabi niya sa iyo. So, you gain knowledge. But the question is, is that uh, is that knowledge that you have gained from your friend, yung 3 plus 3 is equal to 9, is based on facts? Is it true? So, it is false. So, therefore, it is not knowledge. It's not a real knowledge. So, a real knowledge is true. So, that's why uh, knowledge and truth work together. Look, we can say that truth is a condition of knowledge. That is, if belief is not true, it cannot constitute knowledge. Because in acquiring knowledge, the ultimate goal is the truth. Okay, now, let's study the process of acquiring knowledge in order for us to under understand better what knowledge is. Okay. First process is the reality. They said that to know is to know something. And what is this something? This something is what philosophers call reality, existence, being, or universe. They are the same. So all those things, object in this world, in this universe, that are existing, they are the reality. Existence, being, sometimes we call existence or reality as universe. So, in this case, let us employ the term existence, since existence is the same with reality, or uh, being, or universe. So, existing is really all there is to know. And general yan. So, lahat ng nakikita mo rito, lahat ng nakikita mo rito sa universe, lahat na nag existed sa universe, they are what? They are reality. They are this so-called existence, being. That's why if nothing exists, knowledge is impossible. That's true. Kung wala nag exist wala kang aalamin. Wala kang may experience na kung ano kasi wala nag exist Because of existence, because of reality, that's why we are continuously searching for knowledge. So, uh, we are continuously doing philosophy we are continuously philosophizing in order for us to understand the meaning of reality, the meaning of existence, the meaning of being or the universe. Okay, example. Reality includes everything we perceive. Look, everything we perceive or everything that can be perceived by our five senses. Animals, plants, human beings, or these are the living beings or an inanimate objects, or living things and non-living things, all, all that are existing in this world, whether they are living things or non-living things. And everything inside our heads, our thoughts and emotions, which represent our inner world. Look, so whether uh, they can be perceived by our five senses, or they are part or represent our inner world. They are considered as reality, existence, being, or universe. So again, we are continuously searching for knowledge because there is reality. And this reality are those things that are existing in this universe. Okay, that is the first. Second, perception. Our first and only contact with reality, with those existing in this world, is through our senses. So what are those senses? Sense of seeing, hearing, tasting, feeling, and smelling. These are the five senses. So we can acquire knowledge using our senses. Knowledge begins with perceptual knowledge. And what is this perceptual knowledge? The knowledge that, when, that we can gain the knowledge that we can acquire through sense of seeing, hearing, 
tasting, feeling, and smelling. Okay. At first, the senses give us knowledge of things or entities. That's correct. Diba? When you see this table, you know that this is table because you know it's nature. When you see uh, that particular person, you know that person because you know that he is a person because you know the nature of that person. Later, we became aware not only of things but certain aspects of things like qualities, quantities, actions, or relationships. Look at the example. How do you know that the table is brown? Because you see it, that is quality of the table. If you know the nature of table, you know that particular object or thing. You have the knowledge that it is table because you know its nature. Now, then you will know the color that it is brown because using your sense of sight or seeing. How do you know that part is hot? Because you feel it. How do you know that three boys are walking? So three, quantity. Because using your sense of sign, you see that there are one, two, three boys who are walking. And what they are doing? Action. They are walking. So because of the sense of sign. Now, they said that uh, the qualities, the quantities, actions, relationships, or these categories cannot be separated with this particular object or with the object to which uh, it, uh, they are inherited. For example, you cannot, say, you cannot separate brown from brown table, it's brown table. You cannot separate um, the action walk if you see the persons are walking. You cannot separate the uh, hat from hat part because it inherits from the object. So that is this category. So that is what we call perception. Okay, so we have first reality, then second perception. The third one is concept. After we perceive things using our five senses, we began to notice that some of the things we perceive are similar to other things. If this is the case, this is the process of, or this process is called a concept, which means an abstract or generic idea generalized from particular instances. Okay, let's uh, explain this using this example. Look, <clears throat> for example, from Rome, Shem, and Roma, they are all persons named of persons. We can form the concept of man. Then, from man, dog, and cat, we can form a higher and wider concept of animal. So, what, what have you noticed? So, we what we group this uh, object according according to their similarities. For example, Rome, Rome, Shem, and Roma. They have the same similarities of being what? Well, of being human. They have two hands, they have two feet, they have hand, they have physical body. So that's why we group them as one because they have similar things in common and we call them man, the concept of man. Then from man, dog, and cat, we group them for having what similar or common thing in them. And what are those? Both of them uh, can react to a situation. Both of them uh, have senses. They uh, have this sense of touch, feeling, smell, hear, and sense of sight. So we can form a higher and wider concept and we call them as animal. And from animal and plant, sample we can form a still higher and wider concept, living organism. So, both uh, plant and animal can be called as living organism. So, what have you noticed? As we go up to this progressive widening, widening is the process. Our knowledge increases. The more down uh, 
the more na lalo, nadadagdagan, pinapalawak mo ang uh, konsepto sa grupo ng mga object. For example, yung man, dog, and cat, we form a concept of animal. So, we can uh, form also uh, a concept for dog and cat for having similar things. They are four-legged animals. So, we will separate man. Di ba? So, that's another concept. So, as we go up to this progressive widenings, widenings, our knowledge increases. That is concept. Another example. Look. For example, man is a first level concept that we can subdivide according to profession. This time, subdividing or narrowing. So, from the concept of man, we can divide it into what? Into some other subdivision. For example, man can be divided can be divided according to profession. So, we can come up with doctor, entertainer, farmer, teacher. So, we can we give, uh, we give four concepts out of the concept of man according to profession or race. Man can be Asian, Caucasian, or Black, or gender. Man can be uh, man, woman, lesbian, gay, or nationality. Man can be a Filipino, a Chinese, or French. So, as we go down this progressive narrowing, narrowing uh, from a general concept to specific, right? our knowledge of things subsumed under a concept of increase. Okay, next is proposition. So, what is proposition? When we use concepts in order to classify or describe an existence, we use what philosophers call a proposition. Proposition is usually expressed in declarative statement that expresses either an assertion or a denial. If it's an assertion, it is a affirmative proposition. If it's denial, it's a neg negative proposition that an existence belongs to a class or possess certain attribute. Okay, look at the example. Example, when I say my, men are mortals, so since uh, proposition is a sentence, it has one. Well, it has a subject. In logic, it has a subject. Then it has a predicate. And uh, the verb or linking verb we call it copula. So, so it is a declarative sentence. When we say men are mortals, ang mga tao ay may kamatayan o namamatay. So. We can make an assertion of men which is affirmative in nature. Thus, this statement, this example of a proposition is affirmative proposition. But when I say, or when we say, men are not mortals. So, having what? Having a negative word now, we make an opposite claim that denies something about men. Thus, the statement is negative proposition. So, the first one, it gives assertion. The, the second one, the second example, it gives denial. So, we make an opposite claim. We deny something about men. Here, we affirm, we assert something about men. So, that is what we call proposition. Proposition is a declarative statement that expresses either an assertion or denial that an existence belongs to a class or possess certain attitude. Okay. The last one under the process of acquiring knowledge is through inference. What is inference? In order to demonstrate that the statement is true, we provide an inference. Sometimes inference, uh, they call it as argument. Sometimes they interchange. They in interchange inference and argument. So it is a group of statements. One or more of these are claimed to provide su 
support for and that that is what we call premises or reason to believe one of the others and we call it as conclusion okay look at this example okay all men are mortals first premise aristotle is a man second premise therefore aristotle is mortal so all of these group on propositions or group of statements we call it as inference or argument here we have three related statements all men are mortals aristotle is a man therefore aristotle is mortal we have three related statements or propositions the last statement beginning with the word therefore is what we call conclusion a conclusion is a statement that we want to prove so this is our conclusion this is a statement that we want to prove we want to prove that aristotle is mortal and what is our evidence what is our supporting evidence so the first two statements all men are mortals then aristotle is a man are what we call premises a premise provides justification evidence and proof to the conclusion look why do we say that aristotle is mortal because from the first premise or proposition it says that all men are mortals then aristotle is a man second proposition so if all men are mortals and aristotle is a man is a man so he belongs to all men that are uh, all men that are mortals therefore aristotle is mortal so these two propositions supported the uh, conclusion that aristotle is mortal okay so that's all for the uh, topic about process of acquiring knowledge again let's uh, give them all we have okay process of acquiring knowledge we have the reality then we have the perception then we have the concept then we have proposition and the last one is the inference or argument okay now since our topic is all about the uh, essence of knowledge and truth let's discuss now the basis for determining truth because we said that uh, in acquiring knowledge uh, the ultimate goal is the truth okay first how do we say that the knowledge we gain are true or are real knowledge first we can use as a basis this so-called belief philosophers emphasize the importance of belief as a basis for the der determining truth look a belief is true if it can be justified or proven through the use of one's senses another basis for determining truth is belief or statement is true if it is based on facts sabi ko nga kanina kung pinaniniwalaan mo na ang table ay matigas kasi ano may basehan ka na ito ay nahawakan mo na na ito ay matigas so it is based on facts now let's try this example look sabi I am alive why? I have a body I can breathe so you can only validate the above state statements if you observe yourself using your senses diba? naniniwala ka ako ay buhay why? I, I have a body I can feel my body I am breathing I can feel my pulse oh, observe my body all of these are based on the facts that I am still alive because I am breathing diba? so this and countless examples provided by your senses prove that you are alive so that is based on your belief but it's because of senses okay so another uh, basis of uh, determining truth is doubt doubt has a, a very important purpose in philosophy 
as it drives our desire to discover the truth. And that is true. Diba sabi nga sa inyo, uh, mas maganda yung nagdadoubt ka ay sa totally wala kang pakialam sa anumang mga bagay. For example, sa klase. May klase ng estudyante na wala lang pakialam sa didi-discuss ng teacher. So totally yan, wala siya nag-gain analysis kasi wala siyang pakialam. Pero, yung isang bata o ibang bata, ibang estudyante, na nakikita mo through their facial expressions na parang nagdadaw, parang naguguluhan. Ayan. You can start gaining knowledge because of your doubt. Because your doubt, what drives you to discover the truth. In philosophy, systemic doubt is employed to help determine the truth. Look, this means that every claim, statement, evidence, and experience is, is scrutinized and analyzed. That's true, di ba? Kapag ikaw ay curious sa isang bagay, pipilitin mo, no? pipilitin mong alamin, ano bang mayroon dito? Bakit ayaw nang buksan? Ano bang mayroon sa kanya? Ba? Bakit lagi siyang tahimik? Curious ka? Nagtadot ka? So, because of that, you are going to what? You are going to scrutinize and analyze some evidences related to this particular object. Di ba? So, if you are in doubt with anything, it will drive you to discover it because you are what? Eager to know what is uh, or what is the reason behind of this particular thing why you are in doubt. Example. For example, you are in doubt with the answer of your classmate your question about the nature of philosophy. So this doubt of yours will drive you to search for more reliable answer by asking your teacher or by reading related materials or by asking another student or another classmate of yours na uh, may alam sa nature of philosophy. So until you discover the truth. Look, so doubt is another basis of determining truth. And last basis in determining truth is consensus. Getting consensus or having people agree on a common belief is another way of determining what is true. That's true. Tingnan mo sa demokrasya ng bansa. Laging yung consensus na nakararami ang nasusunod. Di ba? So, tingnan mo, bakit yung mga kilalang philosopher up to now, Uh, we are using their views, we are using their reasoning about this particular object or thing. It is because uh, majority or they get the consensus of the majority of their followers or of the people who believe in them. So, but they said that although this approach uh, has certain limitations, yes, Getting everyone to agree on something may not take the belief through. Okay. Uh, let's take this example. For example, the vast majority of Germans during the time of Adolf Hitler believe that Jews are racially inferior. So, karamihan to sa German at the time, naniniwala na, uh, na time ni, uh, during the time of Adolf Hitler, naniniwala na mga Hudyo or Jews are racially inferior. Mayon. That is because of their consensus. But, sabi nga, although this approach has certain limitations, getting everyone to agree on something may not take the belief true. Yes. Kaya nga not all. Kaya nga majority lang. Diba? You know what? What happened? This is, obvi- this is obviously false, supported by a pseudo-biological science of the Nazi. The result of this false consensus is the extermination of millions of Jews in many parts of Europe. Look, so, uh, another example. Look, during the time of President Estrada, uh, majority of our uh, lawmakers, uh, congressmen and senators, They agreed to uh, restore the death penalty because they believed at the time that is, this is the answer 
for the uh, rampant heinous crime. Lagana pa siyang heinous crime at that time. Ngayon, sabi nila, uh, ibalik natin ang death penalty kasi uh, ito ang isang magandang solusyon para ito ay mahinto ang uh, karumaldumal na krimen. Okay, so consensus, they get the consensus. So, we believe na pag ma, sa, lalo na sa demokrasya ng bansa, kung ano yung uh, consensus nung nakararami, yun ang nasusunod. So, kahit tayong mga hindi sang-ayon, whether we like it or not, susunod tayo because that is the consensus of the majority. But later on, di ba? Uh, na ipatupad na ang death penalty. Doon nila napatunayan na mali yung consensus nila. So that's why when President, uh, former President Arroyo assumed the presidency, inabolished nyo li ang death penalty because they found out that uh, death penalty uh, is not the answer to this rampant genius crime. Walang pinagkaibihan dun sa sa war on drugs ni President Duterte, di ba? So, na for more uh, or majority of the Filipinos, they believe that this is the answer for the uh, problems about drugs. But look, what happened? So now, uh, this war on drugs, there is a war on drugs, but they uh, abolished the so-called Oplan Tokka. So, those are the basic basis of determining truth. We have belief, doubt, and consensus. So, that's all for our uh, lesson for uh, episode 4. Until next episode, see you on episode 5. Bye-bye!